Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show on this 7th, a Tuesday, 7th of November, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. You know, I was tuning in the Canadian Prepper Channel this morning and I was listening to the show that he put on. And he uh, is evidently in touch with these freeze-dried food companies and he knows the people that work there. One of the people within these freeze-dried food companies told him, according to him, that the Federal Reserve and that building behind him there, that's the Federal Reserve building, which is full of gold, stacked to the roof of gold. It's got vaults that probably goes underground for 50 stories. Heck, it might be connected to the subterranean tunnels that lead off to places like Area 51 for all we know. I think the building is number 33, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no significance there, that number. Anyway, moving on with what I was going to say is one of these guys that, that evidently works in the freeze-fried food industry told him that the Federal Reserve's putting in a huge order. A very pricey order because what they're ordering is things like crab legs, Lobster tails. Oh, your tax paid dollars. <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, great little channel, Canadian Prepper. Uh, he's a little bit under the weather right now. He's got some sort of a head cold or flu or something. Wish him all the best. Hope he gets better real soon. Now moving on, more news. United Nations chief says that Gaza is becoming a graveyard for children. Destruction. Those buildings are basically been leveled. If you see that excavator, he's just digging up a leveled building. Gosh knows what is in that leveled building. Probably would be very gruesome. Let's move on. Israel is to control Gaza indefinitely, according to Netanyahu. Uh, of course, you know Netanyahu is the leader of Israel. United Nations leaders say Gaza war must stop now, as reported death toll tops 10,000. And you see that guy, he's got his ear to the ground there. Do you see in the rubble? He's listening for any voices down underneath the rubble. That's what he's doing. He's got his head down. Pitiful situation that's happening over there. It's awful. Horrible. Now, you know, on my last show, I said that, hey, you know, uh, maybe something will happen this weekend. And it seems like not a whole lot has happened. On the weekend. It seemed like a fairly quiet weekend. But maybe something did happen. Something we're not aware of. And this is kind of like a change in the investors' attitudes. I think they're finally starting to realize, and just now they're starting to realize, that this whole game, they've been played by the Fed. This is, I think, what they're starting to realize is they've been played. The Fed Reserve, Federal Reserve, is they know they can't stop. They, they can't stop with this, with, their, with what they're doing, with, with this, not just, not the raising rates part, not the, they're going to have to keep pulling and create more money and new money creation. And soon, because prices are going up on everything. I'm going to tell you guys what, you know. I mean, think about it for a minute. When you go to the grocery store and how it used to be that food was one of your smaller costs associated with living, cost of living. You know, it, was, it wasn't that big a deal. You know, and, and you could feed yourself for less than $5 a day used to be. 
Now it's probably getting up close to $20 a day for the average person. You take 30 days in a month, you know, and add, add $20 a day, uh, and it starts to get to be a pretty good little piece of money just to feed one person for a month. And then you multiply that by how many people you have in your family. But what about when it goes up to $100 a day? Now, that's not too much of a stretch of the imagination, and I'll tell you why. is because it used to be less than $5 a day, and now it's like 20 to be an equal amount. Um, that's not that many years ago. Just, just probably uh, in the early 2000s till now. Oh, well, that's like a four times increase. If four times the increase again, it's going to put you up close to $100 a day to feed yourself just for one person. Now you multiply that and you say you got four people in your family. That's 400 bucks a day to feed them. This is what inflation can do. And this is the kind of runaway inflation that we're headed for. And you think wages are going to keep up? Think again. And so what's going to happen with all this? And this is not going to happen... I know the lead-in to all of this took a long time, very slowly, to watch crude prices rising. And it's not just food, it's rent, it's everything across the board. Keeping up a car, it's everything. Now, there's a time coming very soon where the average person that lives here in North America, all, all of us, Canadians, Americans, even if you if you go over across the big pond, they're still it's the same thing. Like in the United Kingdom, it's the same thing. There's going to come a time when nobody, the people that are keeping up right now, and maybe they're not able to put as much money away every month as they used to be able to. And now, now they're having to use up all of their money at the end of the month. They're still keeping up. But soon they're going to be falling behind. Because inflation's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. And this sea change that could have happened this weekend, and investors starting to realize, hey, you know what? It's going to be inflation. But it's just starting to dawn on them now. And give it a little bit more time, and it's going to dawn on them more and more. It's going to be inflation. They're going to start to react to that. That's going to drive the inflation higher. Uh, we have to wait and see what's going to happen with this war because this is a big deal looking forward. It could erupt or could fizzle out. This is the way with wars. I mean, I'll tell you, honest to God, a, a war is like, it's like lighting uh, the fuse on, a, on some sort of a giant firecracker or something. You don't know if it's going to fizzle out or if it's going to blow up big. You know, it's just, while well, the fuse is hissing away, and the fuse is lit on this. We're going to have to wait and see if it fizzles out or if it really becomes something huge, but it could be turned into, I mean, it's got the potential. Turkey, Iran, they're all there. The players are all in place. The fuse is lit. We'll see. Let's take a look at the silver price today. Silver's dropping today. It's down 52 cents. 22.48 today for silver. You know, I, I, a thought just occurred to me, you know, and it's what I've said all along about all of this with the Fed and what they're doing. And oh, by the way, the Bank of Canada has decided they're not going to continue with this charade. They're gonna stop the. They're gonna start lowering rates. That's what I heard this morning. Oh, that's a signal. That's a signal. I imagine you're gonna see the Fed start to lower rates soon too. The Bank of Canada. They always follow each other's lead. You know, it's almost like the COVID thing. When COVID swept through, first one country would lock down, and then the next one would see them do it, and then they would do it. They're all a bunch of copycats. Then None of them think out of the box or think on their own. They always do what... 
never mind anyway I'm not gonna go there get into that uh, okay down 52 cents on silver today uh, let's take a look at cryptocurrency today and Bitcoin is 34,798 and Ethereum is 1876 and XRP is 68 cents. So XRP come to actually come down just a little bit. It crested over 70 cents yesterday. That's a lot for an XRP. Now taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average today. And we're down by 1.53 points at 34,094. So Dow's not going anywhere today, hardly. Crude oil is at 78.79 it's down two dollars and three cents which is a big drop for crude oil maybe they know something we don't know i don't know bonds and rates today we're looking at uh does this page come down uh, jumps down all at once whoop U.S. 10-year at 4.59. It's down 6.9 basis points. And the U.S. 30-year is down 8.2 basis points at 4.74. Taking a look at the U.S. Well, you know, I mean, investors, some investors, people say, well, nobody's going to buy treasuries. But, you know, I mean... Think about it this way. Get your money in the bank. You're not earning any interest on it. And a lot of people are, are taking their money out and they're investing in treasuries and money market funds and everything else. They're pulling their money out of the banks. and they're, That's why the bank's gotten so much... Well, it's one of the reasons why the bank's gotten so much trouble. I heard Bank of America might be getting in trouble pretty soon. You gotta watch that one. You know, what was it? It's a how I think it's a housing market's getting ready to turn downwards, you know, and an awful lot of people too have invested in their they've bought into homes back when interest rates were low and they got fixed rate mortgages and they're not they're not anxious to sell and get out of that because it's a good deal. But the banks are taking a loss on it because interest rates went up because they're they're invested in a lot of that. To the tune of billions and billions and billions of dollars. I mean, that also, what it does, and that's kind of why the housing market hasn't fell off, is people aren't selling their homes because they're into these fixed rate mortgage hosts and they're not going to sell because they know they're not going to get a good deal any longer. And well, they got to live someplace. And so what's happening is the bank's taking a loss on it. They're not selling, so that leaves a, a shortage on the market of. Of home, like there's not the market's not flooded with homes, and so the homes taking a little bit longer, a little bit longer to sell is an understatement. But because there's the market's not being flooded with homes, it's supply and demand law. Supply and demand uh, means if there's not a big supply, then prices won't move down. You know, or they'll move down insignificantly. Even though there's no money coming into the market, people will sit and wait for the wait for their house to sell. What drives prices down is is when you start to get more start to enter into the market and then somebody out there, just like you trip a switch, somebody out there says, Well, I'm gonna I don't wanna sit here and wait forever to sell. I'm gonna drop the price by ten, twenty, thirty thousand. He drops it, and then all the rest of the houses down his street drop it. And then the next thing you know, the price, house price is dropping. That's what we're going to see soon. When the last of the buyers dry up completely. Because the economy's going downhill. All the Fed succeeded in doing in this whole charade that they've pulled. We're raising rates, this rate cycle, and, and, and they're... Quantitative tightening, all they've succeeded in doing was slowing down a red hot economy. Slowing it down to the point and cooling it down to the point where we're entering into a recession. That's all they've done. And now, 
you. Listen, you watch. Watch what they have to do when they destroy this economy and then inflation starts to take off again. Watch what they have to do. They're going to have to go into some sort of UBI programs or something. Stimmy checks all over again. It's going to happen. Let's take a look now at the... Uh, oh, oh we, we've, got, we've taken a look most at everything now. <laughs> See what's happening in the markets today. Okay, guys, listen. Thank you for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.